Hey guys, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I'm working on my truck, my Dodge Ram 1500. I love saying this because it irritates somebody out there, but this is the truck that wouldn't rev over 2500 RPM. Anyway, um, I gotta change the oil. I haven't changed the oil since I, well, I changed the oil the day I got it, or the day I got it up and running. But it's due for an oil change now. If you remember when I had the valve cover off, it was all sticky inside there. Somebody, the guy was using Lucas oil treatment. I, I don't like that stuff. I don't like any of that stuff. I would, I would never use it. There's no reason to. There really is no reason to. Why waste your money? There's just no reason to use it. So I changed the oil then, but I know all that sticky stuff is still inside. I've actually put 4,000 miles on this thing now, and I have it running still because I like for it to be hot when I change the oil. I just romped it up and down the road a couple of times, over 2,500 RPM, and um, this way just circulate everything and whatnot, make sure it's nice, all, every, like any debris that's in the oil is suspended. I'm also gonna make a video, and I'm not doing it right now, but I know it arrived today. I, I bought an oil filter cutter. Because I wanna show you guys what the inside of an oil filter looks like. So, anyway, let me get this thing set up, let me get it up in the air, shut it off, and then let's drain the oil. What's step one? Open the hood. Step one is always open the hood. Can't tell you how many times I've seen people do oil changes all of a sudden realize they can't get the hood open. Now you just drain the oil. Now what? Besides, some vehicles have the oil filter on top. Cartridge style filter that you're supposed to take off first before you drain the, before you take the oil fill out or the oil drain plug out. So if you didn't take the, the cartridge filter out, guess what? You still got like a quarter of the old oil in there. So anyway, uh, oh, one other thing real quick. You notice those are daytime running lights with that new launch scanner that I picked up, I was able to actually turn those on. I like having daytime running lights on. Probably because I'm from Sweden and over in Sweden, all the cars have the lights on all the time. And I guess it's just I, I, something I kind of got used to and I always wished that we had it over here. So I was able to turn the daytime running lights on on my truck, I did. I was able to actuate it with the scanner and make them stay on. So uh, yeah, let me set this thing up and let's dump the oil. All right, lift this set up. I'm going to shut it off as you see. It's fully warmed up. Even though it's just me doing it on my own vehicle. I hate these caps on these oil, on these oil fill things. I do that on every vehicle. Also, it helps the oil to drain. A lot of people don't realize that. Up in the air, maybe 13 there. That thing's gonna be hot. But it's the way I prefer to do it on my own vehicle. Now, woo, a little splashy splash there. All right, let's clean it, let that drain out. That's what I hate about those funnels. They decide to make a nice mess on the floor sometimes, especially when it's hot. But that funnel was up in there already, so that's why I left it. Now I got a mess to clean up. Cool. It's because of how hot it is, too. All right. So while the oil is still dripping out, I have I moved the um, drain over a little bit, but it's still going into the pan. Sorry for the glare. It's just because the door's open. There happens to be a white car out there, so it sends off a glare. Anyway, so there's the filter. As you see, it's dry, right? There you go. It doesn't take much. Hand tight is all you're supposed to do. So many people tighten the oil filters up like there's no tomorrow. And then you can't get them off. You can't get them off. So let me get this drained out. Let me get this cleaned off. And if you remember on the previous, on that one previous video, oops, hold on. The bushings here got destroyed because the oil was dripping down on it i gotta see if there's a trough i believe there's supposed to be a trough in there to collect that i gotta see if there's one available but i clean it off each and every time so i'm not too concerned well each and every time i've only changed the oil once so uh let's see what else 
Anything else special here? Nothing really. The front ends, I just rebuilt that. You saw that video. It's pretty dry under here. There's no leaks. That's That there was from it splashing from when I just dumped the oil out. And as you see, it's still dripping out. And uh, let me, ex I got to explain something about the dry shift in a minute. But let me get this changed over. And uh, we're going to go from there. Gasket surface is wiped down. And I primed the filter a little bit. As you see, there's some oil in there. It's getting soaked up by the media right now. But I normally don't um, fill them to the top because this is going in at a slight angle. So let me get this in there. And if you noticed, I did not put oil on the seal. So people are like, ah, oh, you got to put oil on the seal. You got to put oil on the seal. Yeah, well, if you noticed, the other filter came right off. And it wasn't leaking. So there, let's see. I can go loose, tight, loose, tight. So I just find that sweet spot where it just gets tight and I stop. Just stop. You're done. You don't have to go any further. All right, let me get brake clean and clean this off. Now, also, you saw how, you see how dirty and nasty that oil is. And like I said, this thing had that Lucas stuff in it. But also, it looked like the guy wasn't very nice with oil changes. So if you have a car that's going a lot of miles between oil changes and now all of a sudden you change oil, guess what? You're going to start getting out all that junk that's built up in the motor. I should have probably gone 3,000 and not 4,000, but I had a lot of stuff going on back and forth. So, I was like oil on my head. Um, so, yeah, the if you've ever changed oil on a diesel, you notice how you change the oil to start it up right afterwards and the oil is already black? Same thing. The, the It's so dirty inside the motor that when you go to change the oil, it's actually you know collecting it all and it's dumping it out. That's why I wanted it hot. I'm gonna make sure I change the oil at 3,000 this time. I shouldn't have gone that far. But I'm gonna do this, you know, that's my normal routine is three to 4,000. Sometimes on a rare occasion, I'll go to five. But the oil's gonna come out pretty nasty for a while. Eventually, it'll actually clean up. It'll be, yeah, it'll be black, but it won't be that nasty. Um, let me just get this cleaned off and then I don't wanna talk about the dry shaft. With that pretty much cleaned off, with the drain plug in and tight and wiped down, like I said, this thing's pretty dry. I'm having a transmission issue on occasions. I need to get this number off of here. Now I have it. I'll explain that one in a second. The dry shaft. Somebody's already replaced the U-joints on this before me. So I just greased them up. And as you see, I got a little too much grease in there. I'm gonna have to just wipe it down. I'm getting a creaking, cracking noise out of the dry shaft under moderate acceleration. Go to take off and you hear, like that and then it goes away every once in a blue moon i get a vibration on the highway and it's kind of a quick vibration so that tells me you know hey that's that's probably universal joints i'm not overly concerned about it it feels okay i'm thinking and it might have just been dry but if greasing it up doesn't change anything then i'm probably just going to put a pair of u-joints in it because last thing i all right it's in the dark last thing i want is a u-joint failure uh, especially because all the traveling i do with this thing so, uh, next thing, tire pressures. Why does this keep going dark? Sorry about that. Tire pressures. So, what do you do for tire pressures? Well, I don't even know what it calls for in a door, to be totally honest with you. I look on the tire itself. What's the maximum pressure that it, that it can take? Some tires take 44, some tires take 50, some tires take 80. Usually, usually, this being my truck, I'll actually set these to about 44. My van, I set to about 40. Oh my God, your tires are gonna blow out. You're putting too much pressure on them. No, they're not. They're not gonna blow out. They'll be fine. I prefer the slightly stiffer ride. To me, this is only me saying this. To me, the tires last longer. To me, I get better gas mileage. I think a car gets better grip. It handles better. So that's, I don't go nuts. I wouldn't put you know 60 in a van or, or 80 in this. Um, if, if a vehicle calls for 80, like you got, you know, 10 ply tires, whatever, you got a truck, whatever, it calls for 80 and 60, which a lot of them do, 80 in the rear, 60 in the front, set them to 80, 60. I usually won't go to like, a, I, I would never go to like a hundred, but I'll usually go 80, 60, 85, maybe 65, something in that range. Those I keep close, but for passenger tires, nah, it's, I usually go 40, 44, something in that range. And I'm usually absolutely fine. I don't know if you guys remember the Ford Explorers debacle way back when, when they were rolling over because of the Firestone tires. 
if I'm not mistaken, those things they were telling you to put the tire pressures at like 24 or 26, that's way underinflated. Way underinflated. And of course, your tires are going to overheat and, and you could have a blowout, and that's what was happening. That was the main reason for it. So I'm sure I'm going to get comments on that from, from some of you. I don't know everything. I know, I know just enough to get myself in trouble. So, all right, let me set my tire pressures on this, and then we're going to let this thing down and put some oil in it. All tire pressures are set. I noticed this one was about five pounds lower than all the others, but I'm going to just keep an eye on it just to see. And they were all at uh, 40. I set them all to 44. That one was down to 35. You know, it, does it have a leak? I don't see a nail in it or anything, so I'm not overly concerned about it. Now, when you're underneath the vehicle, you can look at certain things. You know, look at the belt, look at the water pump. I can see the water pump there. I can also see a dirt dauber nest. Let's see, what else? Uh, you know, here's the thermostat on these things. They, those can be kind of tricky sometimes. Some of the, sometimes the bolts break. So if you're ever gonna do a thermostat on one of these, just be mindful of that. I have seen them break. Uh, let's see, what else? You can look for oil leaks. You can look for anything out of the ordinary. Now, the problem I'm having with the tranny I've never experienced that problem that I'm having ever before. I've rebuilt a few of these. Let's see, uh, RFE. If you start it up on a cold start, or if it's been sitting for a couple hours, you start it up and you immediately stick it in reverse, it won't go. You rev it up, like you start to rev it up, realize like, whoa, it's not actually nothing's there. You just feel it's starting to move. If you wait a second and all of a sudden it'll fully engage, if you back up and then you go forward, when you come to a stop, lockup is actuated and it'll actually stall the motor. And you restart it and it's fine. If you start it up on a cold start and count to 10, let's say, and then stick it in reverse, it's absolutely fine. It'll only do it if you stick it in reverse first and it does that, like as if it aerated the flu, fu uh, yeah, like it aerated the fluid for some reason and that aeration is doing something with the lockup. What it is, I haven't the slightest idea. I got a few people that I can ask that question to see if they can give me some kind of an answer. I'm not overly concerned because driving it, it shifts absolutely beautiful. It drives fine. That's the only issue. So am I gonna pull the tranny apart for that? Heck no. I ain't gonna bother doing that. I hate doing trannies. I can't stand it. If I have to, I have to. If it's a race application, different story. On my everyday driver, whew, I really don't want to. We actually have a wreck truck out back. Man, matter of fact, let me show you that. It's kind of interesting. We have a wreck truck out back with very low miles on it. And I can get the transmission out of that if I really needed one. Because like I said, I'd just rather not build one. Look at that thing. That took a shot. Let's see if we can get a bird's eye view of that. I mean, that's a heck of a hit. I'm sure whoever was driving it probably felt it, but pretty sure they did okay with that. I mean, look at that, the actual Spring perch ripped through the bed. Interesting. But yeah, but you, but you should, might want to see that. But this thing's got super low mileage. It's only got like 23,000 miles on it, if I'm not. Which is like nothing. So we bought it because we need the motor for another project. So, all right, let's uh, put oil in this. Oh, and then let me tell you about the oil I got. Talk about right place at the right time. Five quart jug. Here's the single jug that I was using to put oil in the filter. So what do I mean, right place, right time? I happen to be in one of the big box stores. Just happen to be there. They don't know me from Adam. And I happen to come around one of the corners and they have one of these carts, you know, one of those push carts uh, with a flat bottom, you know, like a flatbed cart, whatever you want to call it. And it is full from one end to the other with regular oil, full synthetic oil, synthetic bled oil, 
five quart containers, four quart containers, and quart containers. They're all covered in dust and stuff. So I'm looking, I'm looking, and the guy who's putting them on the thing there, he says, you want to buy some oil cheap? Sure. What you got? She says, two fifty a quart. Whatever, any quart, and uh, ten dollars each for the jug. Whew, that's a smoking deal. That's a smoking deal. Guy's name tag said manager. So I'm looking. I said, "What do you want the whole cart full?" He goes, "You want the whole cart?" I said, "If I buy all of this from you right now, I said, what do I have to give you to take this off your hands?" He says, "A dollar a quart and five dollars a jug." By the time he rung me up, it was 200 bucks, and it shows you your savings. It was over a thousand dollars in oil. Talk about right place at the right time. I got lucky, 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 lucky. Wasn't gonna pass that up. I can. I'm a mechanic. I can always use oil. I've got a ton of oil in my storage unit because I got no place else to keep it. I mean, it was a flatbed cart. It was. Uh, it was a lot. It, it took up about, I put it in the, in the bed of this truck, it took up about a third of the bed. It, it was quite a bit of oil. Um, but yeah, 200 bucks for $1,000 worth of oil. So anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, just total, total luck on my part, right place at the right time. Um, all right, so let's dump this, let's, let's dump this down. Let's let this down and let's put oil in it. I actually didn't take this out the last time. Some of you know what this is. Look at the crud that's on this thing. That's disgusting. That's lack of oil changes, and it's also that Lucas stuff. I, I Like I said, I don't trust that Lucas stuff one bit. But the stickiness is gone. This is like a baffle piece that sits up inside the oil fill. And look how nasty it is inside the oil fill. I'm actually going to leave this thing out for a while. Hopefully get more vapors up there. The reason this thing is in there is because the PCB comes off of here. And this helps direct the uh, vapors away from the PCV. But I'm going to leave this out for right now because I, I, I basically want more of the vapors to get up inside there. I wonder if I should actually unbolt it and clean the darn thing because that's actually pretty darn nasty. I just realized that. Wow. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Let me think about it for a minute. I actually decided against it. I'm just going to put the oil in it. And... I'm not concerned about it like plugging up the filter screen or any of that stuff because it breaks down reasonably easy. And the fresh oil, the reason I'm using high mileage too, even though the motor actually doesn't have high mileage, the high mileage has a lot more detergent uh, detergents inside of it. If you ever go and check out uh, Project Farm, he does some pretty good tests and he is like way beyond me. Let me, let me tell you what, that, that dude, he's on another playing field. He, uh, he makes some excellent videos, and he tests like all these products and whatnot. And he did a pretty good test on um, on high mileage oils and like the the different types of high mileage oils. And uh, it, it's he it did a pretty good job. So let me continue adding the oil. Let's get this all done. And there we go. That's actually six quarts. That's what this thing holds. Like I said, I'm going to change the oil more often. I, I just I shouldn't have gone four. I should have gone less than that. But like I said, I'm not overly concerned about it being a big issue. Just wanted to show you what it looked like. It's it's not going to cause any drivability issues. It's not going to cause any engine damage that I need to be concerned about. It's just yeah, it's it's just it's munged up and nasty in the areas that were all vapor, which that area is all vapor. And like I said, that's another reason for me leaving that that piece out because I want more vapors to be up and in there and circulating because it'll help break it down, especially with the high mileage oil now. That'll help it too. So let's just button this up and we're going to go on a road test. Home. Now one thing too, here's the filter that I took off my truck. I marked it do not throw out. This filter is heavy. I mean, it's heavy. So I can imagine the media is probably all stuffed up with junk. So I'm wondering if the last couple thousand miles if the filter was actually doing anything 
because filters bypass. You bet you didn't know that. Some of you did. But I bet you a lot of you didn't know that. You leave your filter on there too long, eventually the filter's not doing anything. But the oil's being bypassed. So, too much pressure. I'll explain that when I make the video and cut that one open. Which, I should be doing that tomorrow. Actually, because of how dirty that filter is inside, and I know it's going to be because of how heavy it is, I'm going to... I'm only going to go 1,500 miles and I'm going to change the oil again. And then I'm going to take a look at that filter and see what that looks like. So, alright, hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Alright guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.